This Halloween I'm doing something different for a change. You can only talk about the best creepypastas for so long before it grows stale. No, this year in the spirit of leaves turning blood red and skies turning grey, I want to talk to you about something that truly fascinates me. Haunted objects. Whether the stories behind them are entirely fabricated or actually real, nobody really knows. And that's what makes these things so interesting. And so scary. This year we'll be talking about 10 specific objects, 10 paintings, that are, according to some, indeed haunted. Now I'm a sucker for these things and I'm sure you are too, hence why you clicked on this video. Whether you wish to believe the stories behind them or not is entirely up to you. But isn't it fun to think about? Sources to all info in this video will be in the description. Come along on this year's Halloween special, as we count down 10 of the most haunted paintings in the world. Number 10. The Dead Mother by Edward Munch. Illness, madness, and death were the black angels that kept watch over my cradle and accompanied me all my life. This is a quote from Scandinavian painter Edward Munch, whose most famous work, The Scream, you might have seen before. Edward did not live an easy life. He was born in a time when the terrible disease tuberculosis was at an all-time high, and this terrible disease took both Edwin's mother and one of his sisters, and slowly, Edward watched as everyone he knew and loved faded away and left him alone in the world. Edward's father, a heavily religious man, would entertain his children by telling them ghost stories and tales by Edgar Allan Poe, and this behavior made all of his children extremely frightened, especially Edward. This eventually led to his outlook on life being quite grim, and this is definitely apparent in his paintings. This makes his painting, The Dead Mother, suddenly make a lot of sense. Edward's mother passed away when he was only five years old, and in this sad painting, he seems to convey the feelings he felt when this happened. A young child with her eyes wide seems to be blocking out reality, for her mother is now gone. Such raw emotion has been perfectly captured on the canvas we see here. With this information in mind, is it so hard to see why some would be upset when they view this painting? You might chalk it up to paranoia or minds playing tricks on those who observe the painting, but some claim that the eyes of the young girl follow them when they walk around it. Some claim that the blankets in the bed around the mother move, and some claim that they feel such strong feelings such as loss, pain, sickness and death just by merely looking at it, and perhaps even a tight feeling in their chest, or murmuring in the back of their mind. Some even feel that they are haunted by the painting, and keep seeing visions of it after they've left the gallery. Could it be that Edward's dark feelings have somehow manifested themselves on this painting, and affect any or all who view his work? Number 9. Man Proposes, God Disposes by Edwin Henry Landseer Man Proposes, God Disposes was painted in 1864 by Edwin Henry Landseer, who is well known for his various paintings of animals, but probably most well known for creating the lion sculptures in Trafalgar Square. Edwin was recognized at a young age as being a child prodigy with particular talents in the works of art, and at the age of 13, some of his works were exhibited at the British Royal Academy of Arts. However, in Landseer's late 30s, a turning point came for him, as he experienced what is thought to be a nervous breakdown. Forever would his outlook on life be altered, as he was plagued with feelings of depression, melancholy and the like. This goes to show that despite being successful and wealthy, hard times can befall anyone. This painting was inspired by Franklin's Lost Expedition, which was a British voyage meant for exploration of the Arctic that departed in 1845. Things during this expedition did not go as planned. Both ships that were sent out became icebound, and the whole of the expedition, all 129 men, 
were lost, and would be for hundreds of years, until a Canadian search team located one of the ships in 2014, and the other two years later. Man Proposes, God Disposes depicts what Edwin imagined could have happened to the men who went missing, which is quite hauntingly portrayed here. Humanity has been defeated by the force of nature. The painting currently hangs in the gallery of Royal Holloway, University of London. It is college tradition to cover the painting with a Union Jack flag when exams are held in the gallery. Why? Because the painting is rumored to drive anyone who sits by it mad. One quite notable story from the college, which should probably be taken with a grain of salt, is that one student who observed the painting became so incredibly upset by it that she was driven insane and allegedly took her own life at her desk right in front of every other student and teacher. Despite this, the painting still hangs in the gallery and the tradition continues. What is it exactly that drives people mad about this painting? Could it be that this morbid art is in fact haunted? Number 8. Love Letters by Richard King This painting is probably the most beautiful one on this list. Love Letters by Richard King hangs in the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas, which is often said to be one of the most haunted hotels in the world, with reports of people encountering the spirit of Colonel Driscoll, the founder of the hotel himself, and of several brides who committed suicide in the hotel. Love Letters is said to be a replica of this painting by Charles Trevor Garland, and they do look quite similar. Despite people claiming that the girl in the picture is someone else, she heavily resembles Samantha Houston, who was the four-year-old daughter of a US senator who tragically died in the hotel by falling down a flight of stairs after chasing a ball. Some claim that Samantha's spirit attached herself to the painting, which is why when people view it, they feel nauseous, dizzy or ill, and even see the little girl's facial expressions change. Some even say that they experience a lifting sensation when viewing it, as if they're being lifted into the air. If you ever find yourself in Texas, perhaps you should visit the Driscoll Hotel sometime. Listen closely for the sound of a bouncing ball. Who knows? Perhaps that's Samantha. Number 7. Pogo the Clown by John Wayne Gacy If you don't know who John Wayne Gacy was, consider yourself very, very lucky. John Gacy, who was a suburban Chicago contractor, used to perform as his alter ego Pogo the Clown at children's parties. As you might expect, his motives were not just to entertain. In 1994, Gacy was executed for the torture and murder of 33 boys and men. This was not a nice man. So, when viewing this painting that was painted by John Wayne Gacy himself, can you feel anything else but disgust? Gacy's paintings were highly sought after, and various famous people have owned this specific painting, such as musician Nicky Stone and actor Johnny Depp. Both people have gotten rid of them. Nicky Stone claims that he just wanted to get rid of the painting, and that since he acquired it, his dog passed away, and his mother was diagnosed with cancer. Johnny Depp claims he became so weirded out by the painting, that he soon developed a pathological fear of clowns, hence why he too got rid of the art. There have been numerous reports and incidents of people experiencing misfortunes after acquiring one of Gacy's creepy clown paintings, such as being involved in car crashes and even performing acts of suicide. Could this all be down to coincidence, or is there something more when it comes to this terrifying time capsule? Fun fact, this picture of Gacy is also said to be haunted, and some claim that this right here, is in fact the face of one of his victims, or an actual demon staring at you. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you wish to believe that or not. Number 6. The Portrait of Bernardo the Galvez by Unknown 
Bernardo de Galvez was a Spanish leader in the military who was a key figure in aiding American forces during the American War of Independence. In the Hotel Galvez in Galveston, Texas, hangs a portrait of the man, which is fitting since the town of Galveston is named after him. Galvez passed away in 1786, but many say that his spirit lives on in this very portrait. Many guests and hotel employees alike have said that the eyes of Bernardo follow them wherever in the hallway they go, and feelings of uneasiness and coldness are not uncommon in close proximity to the painting. However, what is most interesting about this allegedly haunted painting is the fact that if one tries to take a photo of the painting without asking for permission first, the portrait will turn out blurry and will sometimes even show orbs, fogs or streaks, and even be tainted by ghostly skeletal images. Yet, if one is to ask the painting for permission to take the photos and then take them, the photos will turn out perfectly fine. Could it be that the spirit of the Galvez is still residing there to this day and refuses to have people see him unless they ask nicely? This urban legend is quite similar to Robert the Doll, another allegedly haunted object whose pictures always turn out bad unless one asks for permission first. Interesting, yet frightening. Number 5. The Portrait of Delphine Lollary by Ricardo Pustanio. Viewers of American Horror Story will undoubtedly recognize the name of this woman. Delphine Lalaurie might just be one of, if not the most vile and despicable woman in all of history. This madam, and I use that term very loosely, would often arrange fancy balls in her lavish mansion, all was well, all was good, until one faithful day in 1834, when a fire broke out in the residence of the Lalaurie family. That Delphine Lalaurie owned a lot of black slaves was no secret, but to the extent of how she had treated these slaves only came to light after this fire. When police and bystanders arrived at the scene of the fire and attempted to enter the slave quarters to make sure that everyone in the house were safe and sound, the Lalauries refused to give anyone the keys. After breaking down the door to the slave quarters, they found a hidden room in the mansion. A room full of unspeakable horrors. A room where multiple slaves had been brutally, sickeningly tortured and murdered in ways that I do not even wish to say out loud. Safe to say, local citizens were outraged and demolished the Lollary residence while the family fled the scene like the cowards they were. The remains of the residence were forever known for having the strangest atmosphere in it after it was sacked, and most who found themselves in the ruins claimed that they were haunted by the spirit of Delphine, who still wished to cause harm to her fellow man. Many years later, after the story of Madame Lalaurie became a well-known legend, a local artist decided to create a portrait of the woman to be hung in the new building that had been built on top of the ruins of the Lalaurie residence. To say that the paranormal activity in the house increased would be an understatement. It seemed that the negative forces of past happenings finally had something to latch onto. Now, people felt nauseous, received scratches on their bodies, and started vomiting by merely being in the presence of the portrait and the house. Low murmurs, racial slurs, and scratchings on the walls have become a common occurrence wherever the painting is taken. It seems the evil entity of Delphine Lalaurie finally found a way of tormenting people again, from beyond the grave. Number 4. The Crying Boy by Bruno Amadio The Crying Boy is said to be a cursed painting that affects any and all who have it in their homes, so you might wish to think twice before buying a copy of it. As opposed to a lot of the other paintings on this list, The Crying Boy seems to affect all copies of it. In 1985, British newspaper The Sun reported on a tragic house fire that had erupted in South Yorkshire, where a family's house had been completely burned to the ground. 
everything in the house was destroyed. Everything except for the portrait of a young soul with tears in his eyes. After this story was published, more and more victims of house fires came forward, all with one thing in common. They all owned a copy of the portrait, and they were always the only things to survive the fires. The paintings would always be found in the same face-down position. What's even stranger is that the Sun actually organized mass bonfires for owners of the paintings to come out and burn them, and all accounts stated that the portraits burned incredibly slowly. There was even a video of someone on the BBC who attempted to burn a copy of The Crying Boy, only to find out that it seemed highly resistant to fire, more so than normal paintings. Some blame preservative varnish to be the cause of the painting's resistance to fire, but some psychics have gone on record to say that maybe, just maybe, the portraits are haunted by the ghosts of the orphans who died during the Second World War. Number 3. Painting of a Headless Man by Laura P. This painting is actually a painting of a photograph shot by commercial photographer James Kidd. The strange thing about it is that what appears to be a headless figure is standing on the left side of the picture, and James insisted that the figure had not been there when the photo was taken. It appeared later in development. In the 90s, an artist simply known as Laura P. saw this photo and was overwhelmed with the urge to paint it. She later claimed that she wasn't quite sure what it was that exactly drew her to the picture, but she decided to do it anyways. Almost immediately after accepting the task and beginning the project, Laura was overcome with strong feelings of fear, uneasiness and dread, and started debating whether or not to even finish the painting. Alas, she finished it, and the painting was then hung up at a local office. However, things were only just beginning. As soon as the painting arrived in the office, papers inexplicably went missing, objects would be moved when no one was looking, and the painting would always remain crooked, even when the office workers tried straightening it. It took only three days for the office to ask Laura to take the painting back, and so she did. The mysterious forces that were terrorizing the office workers soon manifested itself in Laura's home as well. Knocks, bangs, footsteps and noises appeared everywhere in her home. Objects would start moving on their own, doors would open by themselves, and the dog would growl at nothing. More sinisterly, however, a glass Laura was drinking from once broke in her hand, and a large piece of the glass disappeared without a trace. Laura decided to tell a friend about these happenings, and the friend was of course quite skeptical, and apparently laughed out loud when she saw the painting itself. According to Laura, when the friend went home later that night, a clock that had been on the wall for 40 years fell down and broke into a hundred pieces. Finally, one of the most horrifying experiences associated with the painting was when Laura's neighbor wanted to show his mother-in-law photos of her paintings, and when he brought the photos home, he soon swore that he saw a white, hazy figure of a person in the corner of his eye. He immediately went home to Laura's house and said he never wanted to touch the photos again. Could all of this just be coincidence, or have something to do with overactive imaginations? Or perhaps, the painting is truly haunted by this headless figure. Number 2. The Hands Resist Him by Bill Stoneham Now this one is a classic, the original haunted eBay painting. I'm sure some of you have heard of this one before, but for those of you who haven't, allow me to introduce you to this most fascinating urban legend. The Hands Resist Him was created in 1972 by Bill Stoneham, and just by looking at it you can tell that something is up. The painting depicts a young boy, apparently based on Stoneham at a young age, and a female doll standing in a doorway, where several hands are pressed against the glass. According to Bill, 
The glass is a representation of the line between reality and fantasy. The doll is the guide who will escort the young boy through it. The painting was first displayed at a gallery in Beverly Hills, California. It was reviewed by an art critic of the Los Angeles Times, and was purchased by actor John Marley, who is most known for his role in the film The Godfather. Sometime after Marley's death, the painting was found at an old brewery by a Californian couple, who soon got rid of the painting as they claimed it to be haunted, or carrying some sort of curse. Afterwards, for one reason or another, the painting appeared on eBay in February of 2000, with a disturbing description to go along with it. The seller included an elaborate backstory, with claims of people seeing the characters in the painting moving during late hours of the night, or leaving the painting and entering the room in which it resides. Photos of the painting were also included, with apparent evidence of the doll character threatening the boy with a gun, apparently telling him to leave. Merely viewing the eBay bidding was even said to cause some to feel ill, or maybe even faint. Children would run away screaming when they saw it, and infants would simply cry in the presence of it. After the painting was sold, the winner contacted Stoneham about these strange occurrences, who was surprised to hear about it all. However, he claims that both the owner of the art gallery where the painting was first displayed, and the art critic who reviewed it, both died within a year of viewing it. Stoneham has since then painted two sequels to the infamous painting, called Resistance at the Threshold and Threshold of Revelation. Luckily, no hauntings have been reported around these paintings. Yet. The Hands Resist Him is quite possibly the most well-known case of a haunted painting. It seems the image affects anyone who views it. But I feel there's one painting that is worse than this one. Let's go over it right now. Number 1. The Anguished Man by Unknown. What makes this painting different from every other painting on this list is that actual footage of this godforsaken painting haunting the residence where it lays exists on the internet. Now whether these clips are fabricated or actually real, it's still chilling to see. But let's back up for a minute and talk about the backstory of this one. The anguished man was passed down from a grandmother to her grandson, Sean Robinson. The painting had apparently been kept in her attic for 25 years, and Sean's grandmother had told frightening stories of it. According to her, the painter who created it had mixed his own blood into the paint when creating it, and had reportedly committed suicide shortly after completing it. Screaming and crying could be heard when the painting was viewed, and a shadowy spectral shape would sometimes be seen in close proximity of it. After inheriting the painting, Sean and his family started experiencing strange things almost immediately. Sean's son has apparently been pushed down the stairs by invisible hands, his wife has felt hands stroking her hair, and screaming and crying has been heard numerous times, along with the aforementioned shadowy figure. Robinson has claimed that he has locked the painting in his basement, and for some reason refuses to sell it to anyone. One must wonder why. Some claim that it's all a hoax, but there's no denying that viewing the painting is extremely unsettling. Like I previously stated, there does exist apparent footage of some of the hauntings that are attributed to this painting, which makes this case unique. Let's take a look at a few of them. I leave a link down to Sean's YouTube channel in the description, so you can view them all for yourself.
Either Sean is one great con man, or we are dealing with one of the most haunted objects in the world. To me, it's almost as if the story behind the anguished man is a little too perfect, a little too scary. But that's the beauty of it, the thought of it all actually being real, which makes it all a whole lot worse. This of course also applies to every other painting on this list. It's also undeniably fascinating to think about. I'm glad you went on this journey together with me. I hope it was as interesting for you as it was for me. And as terrifying. Happy Halloween everyone! Here's to another year of horror. Stay awesome everyone. Good bye.